one of the key dynamics propelling everybody forward in season two is power abhors a vacuum. Power resides where men believe it resides. All these different kings are vying for the throne because they see in the wake of Robert Baratheon's death the chance to see his power. Joffrey, Renly, Rob Stark, they'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. Season two, it's really building towards a, a massive battle. No! We're in a council meeting, and then out of nowhere comes her favorite brother, Tyrion. I come in with the note from Daddy that I'm being appointed the Hand of the King in his absence. What do you know about warfare? Nothing. But I know that our enemies hate each other almost as much as they hate us. In the throne room scene, Joffrey prods a bit into a certain curiosity that's been born in my mind. I had a disgusting lie about Uncle Jamie. And you? <laughs> what you just did is punishable by death. She's got not an ounce of control over her son, and that's horrifying to her. King in the North. In episode one, we have this nice little scene between Rob and, and Jamie. Stannis Baratheon sent ravens to all the High Lords of Westeros. King Joffrey Baratheon is your bastard son. That's the first time you see Jamie a little worried. At the beginning of season two, Catelyn is with Rob and Sansa and Arya. She hopes are safe in King's Landing. You're here to answer for your brother's latest treasons. This is a poor girl whose father was executed. She's sort of been left alone with this monster. Joffrey does it very publicly. He's not afraid to show how he's treating Sansa. But because he rules by fear, no one's going to speak out about it. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? She's to be your queen. Have you no regard for her honor? Tyrion is the only one that speaks out against Joffrey because he kind of can. We're looking for a boy named Gendry. We'll be back with more men. I'm with Yorin on our way to the Night's Watch, but hopefully Yorin's going to try and drop me home on the way there. What does the gold clips want with you? No idea. I thought they were after you. Why? Did you kill someone, or is it just because you're a girl? I'm not a girl. Do you think I'm as stupid as the rest of them? Bran and Rickon are still at Winterfell with Mr. Lewin. Every night it's the same, running through the Godswood, sniffing the dirt, howling. These are dreams, nothing more. My dreams are different. Mine are true. Danny was in a much more sombre place than where we left in the end of season one. Does it ever end? Everything ends, even the red waste. So I took it upon myself to send my Dothraki off to try and find a place that we could try and survive. The one Dothraki that did come back came back with tales of a paradise in the middle of the desert that was intrigued by the idea of dragons. I will vouch for her, her people, and her dragons. Welcome to Karth, my lady. Season two begins with Jon traveling north of the wall, and he's traveling north with the other members of the Night's Watch, the Lord Commander and his friends Sam and Gren. The Night's Watch stop at a rather horrible man's house called Crasta. He's a quite despicable character. He marries his daughters, and they give him more daughters. Sam does the one thing he shouldn't do, which is to fall in love with one of Crasta's wives, Gilly. I wanted to give you something. I belong to my mother. Keep it safe for me. I come back. One thing we definitely need if we're going to take King's Landing is ships. Rob thinks the best move would be to send Theon back to his father. Catelyn's always had an issue with the Greyjoys. You don't want Balaam Greyjoy for an ally. I need his ships. They say he has 200. Theon goes off with these good intentions, but when he gets back home, he gets turned against me. My fears have come true. The Starks have made you theirs. Rob sent Catelyn to Renly's camp to persuade Renly to join Rob. Renly and Stannis are both fighting to be king. The Iron Throne is mine. No one wants you for their king. Stannis is obviously next in line, but Stannis is not going to join the side. Melisandre is a character who arrives in season two. She believes in other gods. You must give yourself to the Lord of Light. I've said the words. Events take a, a sudden turn when Catelyn is in the tent trying to talk to Renly. <laughs> he is stabbed by some form of evil spirit which has been conjured up by Melisandre. Afraid that she is actually going to get accused of this murder, Catelyn flees with Brienne. 
In the name of King Joffrey, drop your weapons. I don't think I will. When Joran goes down, that's when everything starts to get a bit scary. Oh! <laughs> Sweet boy! She already knows there's something a bit strange about Jacken, and she sees the axe, and she gives them the axe, just leaves them to get out. <laughs> Round up any survivors. We'll take them back to Harren Hall. They are just focusing on staying alive, and that's probably the worst place to be if you want to stay alive. Unknowingly, Tywin Lannister sort of saves Arya. Get these prisoners to work. Bring the girl. I need a new cupbearer. Look. The Fist of the First Man is where they were going to meet Corrin Halfhand, who wants to go on a ranging mission to find out what the wildlings are doing. I need to move fast and silent. There's wildlings up on the pass. Corrin wants to go and find out what Mance Raid is planning to do. <laughs> He's left to kill one of the wildlings, an egret who he doesn't kill. When Sam and Gren are digging through the snow at the Fist of the First Men, they find Dragonglass, and we're not quite sure what the significance of Dragonglass is, but it's a curious thing to find buried underneath the Fist of the First Men. The wolf pup has gone south. The north is ripe for the taking. Theon completely betrays me, and not only me, but my whole family. As any child, any boy would want, he wants his father's approval. <laughs> They attack Winterfell and they decimate it. I've yielded Winterfell to Prince Theon. Betray me and you will wish you hadn't. Mother of dragons. It would be an honor to host you at the House of the Undying. The Carthine people only wanted one thing, and that was my dragons. And, and that began the theme throughout season two for Danny, which is the fact that she couldn't trust anyone. It's a pretty horrific, bloody scene that I return to. And the dragons are gone. Where are my dragons? The plan all along was Pietri and Zarazan and Doxos would steal my dragons and rule. You have my dragons. I will take you to the House of the Undying, where I have put them. You let a half-wit escape with a cripple. And Rickon too, the little one. Theon basically turned his back completely on our family. I told you what would happen if you served me loyally. And what would happen if you did not? <laughs> He's really stabbed me in the back completely. Got as far as the farm, and then doubled back. Must have been the farmers, boys. Killed them, burned them, and passed them off as little lords. Fate has given us this chance to... You lost your mind! Get out! The Lannisters are desperate to get Jaime back, so Littlefinger deceives Catelyn. Both girls are healthy and safe for now. He says to her, if you give us Jaime, the Lannisters will return your two girls to you. He's been the captive for a long time. He killed Lord Karstark's son when he escaped. Kingslayer went last night. Come. When he meets Brienne the first time, he's never seen anyone like that. Is that a woman? It's kind of the beginning of a remarkable relationship. Catelyn frees him and instructs Brienne to get him to King's Landing. No, he can't carry out his duties as a king because he'd have to kill his own mother and he's not going to do that, so it makes him look weak. You saved me and the two I was with. Speak three names. I can name anyone and you'll kill him. She's a little bit skeptical about it. When the tickler turns out to be dead, that's when she's like, this guy is a good sort of contact to have. <laughs> Stannis, two days from the capital and the wolf at my doorstep. We'll ride at nightfall. She asks, Jack in to kill Tywin. I need him dead right now. This a man cannot do. Give a name, any name. She decides to turn it around a little bit. Jack and Hagar. Hagar gives a man his own name. I'll name you. If you help me and my friends escape. If he's not going to kill Tywin, then she's going to make him kill more than one person to help him escape. I don't want to marry the Frey girl. This woman has the potential to break the vow that Catelyn made to Walder Frey. I don't want you to marry her. Walder Frey is a man you do not mess with. I am hers, and she is mine. We die today, brothers! Aye! They kill men that Theon grew up with. Let's go home. They destroy Winterfell. I burned it down. Everything. What she doesn't know when she finds out is her two youngest are still alive. They may come back, go north, to the wall, to John. What do you think they'll say when they hear about you and me? Nothing happened between you and me. She's very wily. Egret. She mocks him and mocks him and mocks him, and you think she's just doing this for her own fun. But actually, she's playing the long game. Should have took me while you had the chance.
When John becomes a captive of the Wildlings, he discovers that Corin Halfhand has been captured as well. Halfhand realizes the only good that can come out of this is one of them becoming a spy amongst Mance Raider's camp. They'll never trust me, they might. If you do what needs to be done, what? <laughs> Come along, John Snow. Time to meet the king beyond the wall. If my dragons are in the house of the Undying, then take me there. That's what the warlock wants. It's here that I walk into unknown magic. This magic is strong. And what of my magic? And she is tested with everything that means most to her. Galicia! Stannis Baratheon is coming for us sooner rather than later. Tyrion and Cersei have a lot in common, and I think that's why they're at such odds with each other. They are going to attack us. We need to be ready. The king is taking personal charge of siege preparations. If the wind holds, we'll reach King's Landing in a day. Will it hold? Can't make promises for the wind, your grace. They say Stannis never smiles. I'll give him a red smile. The threat from Stannis is the most terrifying for Joffrey, and the most real, I suppose. Mudgate, that's where he'll land. And if Stannis does attack the Mud Gate, what is our plan? There's all this wild fire down in the basement's basement. He gets together with this pyromancer and figures out a way to stop them. <laughs> When Joffrey realizes that the whole fleet hasn't been destroyed, you see that he is most certainly a coward. They're coming ashore. They're too many. The Hound goes out there, and he realizes that we're outnumbered. Half the men that arrive on the shore are burning. That's the one fear of the Hound. He doesn't do fire. It only takes one burning man running towards you. When the Hound comes back in from fighting, he abandons the king. And that is a massive blow to Joffrey. He just bolts and leaves the responsibility to Tyrion. Those are brave men knocking at our door. Let's go kill them. I get pretty banged up. It could have been worse, though. My squire, Podrick, saves me. And then father comes and saves the day, so he gets all the recognition. The king won't give you any honors that we will not forget. With the great aid the Tyrells gave to the battle, the deal was struck to marry Marjorie to Joffrey. Cersei thinks she's won because she's gonna upset Sansa. She couldn't be happier. And then Littlefinger kind of crushes her hopes. If he's not marrying me, He'll he... let you go home. Joffrey's not the sort of boy who gives away his toys. Welcome home, Daenerys Stormborn. My home is across the sea where my people are waiting. He will be waiting a long time. He thinks that he's got her, but of course, the dragons had learnt how to breathe fire. Dracarys. <laughs> John hasn't returned when he's sure to. The fist of the first men and Sam's getting nervous. He's John on the half hand. We're back. The end of season two. We leave Sam in rather a perilous situation. Two blasted wildlings. And three horns is White Walkers. Run! 